Okay, so today I wanted to talk about the uh, ELC Even 90. It is the second smallest tank in the game. I don't know if we can actually count the Polish TKS. Um, it is a low tier, so a lot of people don't really play it. But um, here's the ELC. It is a very small tank, as you know, and I can imagine. I can imagine that you're imagining that you can really use this tiny turret to your own, own advantage at medium distances because no one's going to be able to hit it. Now, it doesn't have a lot of firepower to speak of. It does have a wee auto loader, it's a 3 round clip. Uh, it's got a long 27 second reload for it with um, 220 alpha and 175 pen. Now, this isn't great even for even in the realms of light tanks at tier 8, it is pretty down there, you know. Um, rate of fire is like less than 6 a minute, which is terrible for the alpha damage that this thing has. But you'll probably find in the replay, it doesn't hold it back too much. Now, its dispersion at 100 meters isn't too bad at 0.33. The aim time is pretty long for a light tank at 2.5 seconds but it does have really nice gun depression. Now, the gun depression on this tank actually feels like a lot more because the, with the size of this tank, you can use the tiniest of divots in the ground just to, you know, get the extra bit of gun depression. It's actually pretty, it's really good. You'll, you'll see that in the replay, actually. Um, hit points, 900. Again, for a light tank, even, it is low. Um, Armor-wise, the entirety of this tank is an overmatch, so the most armor you have is about 15mm on any part of the tank, I believe that is just fancily. And if you times 15 by 3, that is 55, I think? Yeah, 50, 55, possibly, or 50. Anyway, um, yeah, so there isn't a single tank at tier 8 or tier 6 that's got a gun that's smaller than that, so um, you know, everything's going to overmatch your tank. Now, it does miraculously pull off uh, bounces. You will see in a replay there will be another even 90 that I'm shooting at, and I, I must be deflecting off his tracks or something because it's. I don't actually manage to damage him at all. <laughs> okay, so it doesn't have a huge power to weight ratio, at least for light tanks. Or, um, it does, but it doesn't feel like it. It must have pretty bad um, ground res resistances, because it does take its time to actually get up to speed, and I usually find it doesn't really go above 50, so it is pretty slow. Um, there are some heavy tanks in tier 10 that are actually faster than that. Now, because of its size, this thing has a massive uh, camouflage rating, so 46%. Now you could you could bump that up a bit higher than I have, but I, d I feel that's more than more than workable for myself. I do like to focus on firepower and vision a lot more than the concealment, and honestly, 46% is insane. So in my setup, just to bump up what I want, I've got uh, coated optics. I I know it's a pretty passive scout, but you can't. But if I need to be active, I would like to you know maintain that vision. I have a vertical stabilizer just to speed up that uh, pretty t bad aim time and improve ventilation just to speed everything else up. Now I haven't carried any high explosive in this tank. Um, honestly with 45 mils of pen, I'm not going to have much luck penning anything other than this tank and I'd much rather just, you know, put solid damage in. Um, I'm running food, obviously that'll bump up everything, including the um, concealment, but it is, again, it is a premium tank, so I can afford it. Alright, so for my crew, obviously I have the standard uh, six cents, that is something you should have on all your tanks. I have a full camo crew, because the camo is one of the strongest advantages of this tank. I have footers and arms, and I've got the aiming, um, you know, the, the accuracy skills just to bump up the pretty bad accuracy of this tank. 
and I've also started on a skill on my commander for situational awareness, just to expand my view range a little bit. Alright, now, obviously, the, um... Actually, I'll skip that, you know that, but... Um... I am planning on sweet marking this tank. I am... A lot of the stats here you see are from about a year or two ago, when I actually first picked up this tank. I believe when it first came out, actually. And back then I wasn't the best player, so I'm currently trying to fight through all of those old stats. And bump it up a bit. Getting 2.3k combined in this tank is actually really easy. And it's pretty hard to have a bad game. You will find your winnate boosting itself up quite a bit when you play it. Anyway, enough of the jibber jabber, and we'll just go straight to the replay. And I'll see you there. Okay, so here's a battle. Um, I would like to point out, I think I got my maths wrong when it came to the um, the armor equations I was doing before. It's actually 45 millimeters effective at most. No, um, you need at least a foot. Only guns below 45 millimeters, and um, you know, caliber. I'm gonna be able to get auto bounce off this, which is no tanks. So, you know, then it's gonna be facing so. You can't rely on your armor at all. Um, anyway, at the start of the battle, I am going to be making my way to the middle of the map. I want to get eyes on the right here of the enemy heavy tanks crossing in to meet our heavies. Now, this is a very important play at the start of the game with this map. If you're if you're from this side, obviously. Um, if you're on the other side, you want to be countering this move. But um. But yeah, um, I'm actually going to almost flip myself at the start of this battle. Let me just adjust my, just my mic while that happens. On the topic of mics, I do have a new one, but I don't... It picks up everything, you know, so I... I'm going to be moving into a new place in a few months, so I'm going to fully set up my mic when I'm there, and hopefully I can get some noise dampening or something just so I can filter out enough noise that the um, you know, the noise gates and all that that I'll use to keep keep my voice clear will work. Now, we're starting at this spot, there's a heavy tank's crossing. Now, normally behind us on this hill with this STRV and Scorpion now, we would have a whole lot of our tanks ready to shoot, but this time is not the case. Now, you may be wondering, why is my medical going green on the side of the 257? It's because despite popular belief, its side armor is actually pretty weak. Now, there is that wee sliver along the side, it goes all the way, that you can pan. Um, obviously anywhere else is actually an auto bounce angle or you're hitting um, spaced armor. But just keep that in mind, the 257 isn't as overpowered as people think it is. It has a pike nose, it cannot side scrape, you know, all of that. Um, it's the same situation with the defender there. Anyway, I, th I believe that's our scorpion actually doing the work there. So at least we have someone. And we're, because of this, we're starting starting to slowly rack up our um, assistance. Now, what's interesting is that even if I wasn't using this bush, I would still be able to sit here because this thing has such good um, camo. So that T that T twenty six E five would be just about on the cusp of being able to spot me from areas now if I wasn't in the bush. That's how close I can get. Look how close he is in my medical there. And I, I will just be able to sit there without the bush. Now, I'm going to sit here a while. What I'm waiting for is the opportunity, opportunity to move up and start putting shots in behind the heavy tanks of the enemy team. Obviously, a risk of this is there may be a light tank up here, the enemy one. Um, yeah, I'm going to make a mistake when I push up. I'm going to be I, I figured that I could just push into the middle here and keep stay unspotted, but um, that is not the case because I didn't realize that this whole hill up on the left here actually goes this way, so I actually get closer to the enemy and they spot me. Now we spot a WZ there just, just as we push out, and I figure it's probably not quite time yet to push forward, so I keep eyes and we make up some more assistance. Now I really want that WZ to push up more, because once he does that, I can feel pretty safe pushing in. My worst fear at the moment is if I do push down, then the E5 or the WZ are just going to bum rush me. 
I see that even though Tiana asked for some fire on him because a really good thing to keep in mind when you're a light tank is that one of your top priorities is to get rid of the enemy's light tanks. If you get rid of their eyes, then you get rid of their ability, the enemy's ability to shoot your team. Now this is my mistake here, I start moving down but I don't realise that I'm actually getting closer to the enemy and I just go into range of the E5 and he spots me. Now you're probably thinking I'm going to get destroyed here, no armour, but as you can see if there's no armour to hit then they're not going to hit it because I'm absolutely tiny. I start putting shots in and I fluffed the last one there. Now I'm going to start moving down this way to make it seem like I'm moving away until I'm unspotted. Once that defender is unspotted I can feel safe putting moving back and he's unspotted now so we're going to move back. Now I'm going to be able to show off my gun defection here. I'm actually going to reverse up I believe. I'll back up a little bit but I'll reverse up again. And you're probably thinking you know 9 degrees is not enough gun depression to be able to work on this kind of angle right? Well you'll find out soon enough that in, some, in one of these bushes there's actually a tiny wee divot which I can take advantage of with this tank. There we go I'm reversing up. Look at that I'm, I've got plenty of gun depression it's actually kind of weird. Now we're gonna finish off this defender. A good thing to know about the psychology of teammates is that once you get rid of a gun they'll get more bold. The less guns there are, the bolder your team gets. Now, obviously you don't want them to rush in and die, you know, suicide. So, um, pick out your users carefully. Now, I'm not poking on a WZ yet, I am reloading anyway. He was facing me and I can't go through his frontal armor. Besides, on the other hand, we can. I'm gonna put a, put a shot into his tracks there and check again and put my last shot into the sensor there because I've got him locked down anyway. And yeah, now I'm fairly confident that there are no tank destroyers sitting in a scamp. So I'm going to find a bush up on this hill here and have a wee peek through and see what I can find. If we can get eyes and I see more wheel fall, a bit more confidence pushing up to where we're going. So I'm going to use this bush, see the size of this tank is just minuscule. And you find that EBR Hotch is actually AFK, so we're going to just take advantage of that. We actually give him a fire there and get, a little, get, another, get another shot of damage, even though we only actually hit one shot. Now there was a scorpion there actually, so there were in fact tanks there, but he's in a pretty vulnerable position. Now we spot this Chibi, he's actually the perfect event to help us to clip. So I'm requesting fire on him anyway, because it doesn't matter if I do the damage or my own team does. It still counts towards my marks. Okay, so he pushes forward, so I put a shot into his track. Now I just have my um, gun posting over, so he has almost nothing to shoot at, which is the advantage I was talking about in the garage before with this tank. It's just so small, and if you can milk that fact, you can do pretty well. Now I'm going to push up. I'm expecting the remainder of that tank that haven't been spotted to be sitting between the A1 and the A4 um, line, you know. So I feel fairly confident coming up here. I'm going to use this bush. I do feel like there may be tanks in here, but I'm willing to take that risk for now. I've got AM for health, so I can take a shot from them. And here's their even 90. Now, somehow I bounce off him. I miss him that time. So I go for a third shot. And I, I must have like just nipped his tracks there. Incredibly lucky player. But there's nothing we can do about that. So I'm going to fall back till I'm unspotted again. I do find that WT Elf Panzer is in the bushes there. Now, I heard him fire before, and it wasn't a big to do sound, so I'm pretty sure he's using the Tom gun. Um, if he was using the, um, the 150mm gun, which isn't in fact a Top gun, but the one from the BBS tank, um, I probably wouldn't be this brave, but I'm gonna push in and get what eyes I can. Now, I give you 90 starts putting shots into us, but I'm feeling pretty okay with with them staying here. Because that IKV has just revealed himself, his sixth sense would have gone off, and now he's afraid of getting shot by my team. So he's gone back into cover. Now, I make a mistake here by pushing out. The WT is firing HE, and even with a small gun, I believe it's 128 or something, millimeter, or 130. 
Um, he still does nearly 400 damage to me, almost well, 326. And that is due to the very light armor of this tank. High explosive is a lot more effective on lightly armored parts of vehicles than um, it is on heavily armored. If you've ever fired HE at the front of a mouse, you'll probably find that you don't do any damage. Now we have a very brave mail backer here pushing up. Um, not the best tank. I just love it because it looks cool. Now this guy gets some um, killed, so I push up to try and get eyes and psycho V, and he's actually pushed up all the way. So I put a shot into his track, he pairs, put a shot into me, I obviously retaliate, and I know he's reloading, so I decide to finish him off. And that is game. Now, we actually had a very um, influential influence on the side of the battle. Um, we managed to milk down the enemy tank's health at the start of the game by getting ice for our team over here, though it wasn't much. I do believe I've got, I got just over a thousand damage taken off them by our Scorpion. So kudos to him, obviously, since he was the only one actually shooting. Um, and then we gave our heavy tanks the, the nudge that they needed to be able to push through and take out the remaining heavies over there. A lot of people underestimate how how much heavies influence the game because they're, so, they're just big, you know, damage soakers. They got lots of health, lots of armor, uh, lots of um, alpha damage as well, high penetration, all of that. But they're just slow. But if you can keep them alive, they can really influence the game just with brute force. Um, our end result here is actually 6k combined, so we get 3.5 three thousand damage um, just from this tank which barely has over a thousand DPM. So it just shows you that DPM isn't everything in this game, as long as you pick your moments and um, take advantage of what you can when you can. And obviously we kept as much eyes as we could for our team, so we have 2.6k spotting, which, which you know obviously brings up our score quite a bit. So yeah. That's the game, I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next video.